Hey guys, welcome to episode 10 of the Wizard Study. And today we're going to be making this. Actually, more this. It's a distiller. Um, this is part of the alchemy section of the Wizard Study. This area, this thing down here is called a retort. Basically, they put something like a candle underneath it. It heats up the liquid inside the retort. It then condensates up onto the top. It evaporates, condensates into the top, slides down as it cools into the flask. And the flask will have something cold underneath it. They might put ice or whatever, some other liquid that's colder in the bucket underneath it, cooling that glass, which makes the condensation or the evaporation turn into condensation and drop down into the bottle in the flask. So basically, it's a it's a way for them to separate out different pieces of a liquid or what have you. Um, it's a very important tool apparently in, in alchemy. So, we need one of these. So to start off, I am going to... I hate to do that. I'm going to just delete everything in the, in the view. I need to do some settings that I don't have done in here. My clip start is going, it's in metric and I don't, I don't want to use metric because everything I'm doing is in English. So I'm going to go down to Imperial and I'm going to set mine to inches. And then I'm going to do my clip start at 0 0.01. Then hop out of that. Now when I do a shift a mesh UV sphere, I have this really big sphere because it's 39 inches in radius, which is huge. We're going to drop that down to a four inch radius add a subsurf modifier to this and we'll crank it up to two which gives you um even more so let's go to the front view we're going to tab in first thing we're going to do is get rid of this vertice in the top because i don't want these triangles i'm actually going to come in and get rid of the top three of these as well get rid of those faces um you know what, let's go ahead and make it this one too. Let's get rid of that one. We're going to loop select this. And I'm going to do an extrude up. Let's, let's turn off the surface. I'm going to scale this in. I'm going to extrude it up. I'm going to rotate. I'm going to shrink it down. Now you can hit E to extrude every time. Or you can hold your control button and right mouse click. So you don't even have to hit E to extrude. It's It's... I just hit E there though, because I was talking about it. But you can rotate. Also, you know what I need to do? I need for you guys. I'm gonna turn my screen cast keys on. I just installed this. Thought this would be kind of neat. Alright, so I'm gonna loop select this, do a scale on it, bring it in. Scale on it, bring it in. And grab all these edges here and we're going to move them over here we're going to bring this one up so it's not buckling we're going to rotate this one down a little bit and we're, we're starting to get that retort look though i think it's all way too big so let's scale all these down We're going to do all of this and say rotate like this. And we're going to grab this end one here. And we're going to move that back up. Because we actually we're going to move it way out. We want it way over here. We're going to scale that down. The loop cut in here. We're going to scale that up a little bit. Because it kind of goes sharp and then it starts to level out. So we're going to do some loop cuts here. And then we're going to select everything, say F3. You type in smooth. Um, apparently it's also a control V. So let's go ahead and use a shortcut control V. Oh, okay. So if you use control V, you still have to come up and say, click on here. Okay. So what this does is it smooths everything out. And this is how much smoothing you want. 
and this is how many times you want to do it. So we're going to do it like three times. And then if we have this turned on and the smooth shader on, now we're looking more like the retort that's in this picture. Uh, maybe this is a little lower. The bend is a little lower. Yeah, so that bends a little lower than what I have shown on my screen here. So we're going to tab in. We're going to select. We're going to come across here. We're going to hide that. I'm going to hit L over here. I'm going to unhide what we grabbed. And I think what we need to do is rotate it and then drop it down. Like there. Then if I do a Alt or Control V and smooth vertices. Oh, maybe that looks a little more like it. Hit all. We're going to do an Alt E. Long normals. And we're going to go outward to about there. So now we have our bottle shape. Uh, it kind of gave me a little bit of kink, kink here, but you know what? I think I've seen them with a kink in the glass because, you know, they're pretty much folding it over. And they don't want it to drip down and go back in because that'd be double work. So I'm going to add a loop cut to the end of this. I'm also going to select this whole end. So I'm going to turn this off for now. This whole end here. Along with this loop cut. And this first section. And I'm going to scale it down a little bit. I'm going to scale this middle one up a little bit. Actually, what I'm going to do is I am going to get rid of that middle one. So now one of the things I want to do is I want to put on the outside of the bottle, I want to put some ribs in it that look like these ones on the end of the tube. So in order to do that, I'm going to split this thing four times. And then I'm going to come in next to each one about, let's do a halfway just so it's measured out evenly. All right, so we're going to come in. We're going to select every other one. Then we're going to do an Alt-E, so the long normals. We're going to go outward just a little bit like so then we're going to turn this subdivision surface modifier on so we can see this better i'm going to do a loop cut on the outside drag it in and i'm going to do that on each side of these ribs just so we have good definition of those bubbles ceiling beads or whatever they so there it is I don't know how much that looks like. Let's, let's move this over. This is kind of a waste of space. I don't know how well this looks compared to the image, but let's check it out. This this one keeps on zooming down. All right. Let's zoom way in on this. I think I need a little more length on the end, which is not too difficult. Let's come in here. We are going to select that end. We're going to do an E to extrude. Come down. I'm going to scale it in. And to get rid of this ripple, I'm going to just take these two here and get them. I'm going to dissolve those. And we're going to do this one on the inside. All right. So basically I brought it in, got it a little bigger, moved it over to the side, and then I got rid of that vertice that was on top. We got rid of that guy. So I'm gonna loop select that. The E to extrude in the Z direction to here. And then we're gonna do it again to there. Um, that's gonna end up being that little loop on the end. 
We're gonna put a loop select or loop cut there. And what that's gonna do is when I turn add the modifier to this, the subsurface, it's gonna make it look more bendy. But we're gonna grab this one here and we're gonna G Z. So we get more of a curve to the neck of the bottle. I'm gonna do some smooth shader on this. I'm gonna grab the bottle in the front view, we're gonna rotate it, and we're gonna move it. I'm gonna go into wireframe to see this better. Um looks like I'm off a little bit on my angle, but it doesn't I mean it's never gonna be perfect in real life, but right there. It's looking pretty good. We're gonna also move this up a little higher. It looks like my size is almost spot on. I guess I could be a little smaller. So we're gonna grab this one and just scale it down just a little bit. Let's go more. Yeah, that's good. I'm gonna move that up that direction. Yeah, that looks good. I might make these taller too, these ribs in this bottle. We're going to select it all, Alt-E, Long Normals, go out a little bit, stop. Now we got to do the end of this bottle here. So I'm going to loop select, okay, we're going to go to the solid, we're going to loop select this outside. We're going to do a Alt-E, Along normals, come out like this. We're gonna turn this proportional stuff off. So I'm gonna do a loop select here, drag this up to about here, and then let's see what it looks like. Yeah, I'm liking that. All right. But, but then again, like I said, I'm gonna hide this. I'm gonna come back into here. I'm gonna also turn this one off. I am going to grab all these and say scale and bring them out. I wish I could stop it from undercutting like that, but I'm gonna have to go around and move each one individually to make it look good. Actually, it's just this one side, isn't it? GG, yeah. GG. Let's see what that looks like. It's probably gonna look good. Oh yeah, there we go. More prominent. Oh, H. All right, now we need to apply some glass material to this. So I'm gonna do a file save as, and I'm gonna save this under episode 10. I'm gonna call this distill. All right, so I got my distill going. Very sweet. I need my glass. So I'm going to open up the hourglass. I'll click on the hourglass. And tab in. I'm going to grab just one piece of this. Control C. Actually, it's Shift D. Sorry. Drop it back down. I'm going to separate this. I guess I didn't need to really copy it tab out. I'm going to grab that and just go control C. When I open up my distill, I'm going to make sure I don't save my hourglass. Then when I paste this in here, it's in here, then I'm going to delete it. This is how I copy over my textures. Um, so now I can select both of these, come down to texture. I guess I don't really select them both because it doesn't really work that well. Ooh, we got the oiled bronze came with it, which is, which is fine. Looks pretty good. So now we're going to start with the bowl because the bowl is going to set the height of the stand. So I guess one way of doing it is we can copy what we got here and make it bigger. But if you look, 
our our lines are running this way and we want to go this way so we're just going to come in and I I am going to shift s and I'm going to first it to select it then when I do a shift a mesh UV sphere I'm on the same center point this was going to be about five inches um that probably looks good for now so I'm going to select this tab in and I want to get rid of everything above the halfway point so there's our bowl I'm going to do an A I'm going to scale it down we're going to go to about there and then I'm going to move it down don't really want them to be the exact same size because that'd be kind of weird so let's see if I go shift Z I'm also going to get rid of the bottom of the bowl here like this but I'm not going to I'm not going to delete it um, let's first see what the Z dimension is on this and the Z dimension is here so we're gonna go control C over hanging over it that copies that value I'm going to come in and select all this. I'm going to say scale Z zero. And then I'm going to come over here and control V to put it back. And then there we go. Now we have a bowl that has a flat bottom. And it really clears the um, glass. But in actuality, it's probably going to be deeper. So you can put ice under it. Or some liquid in the bowl so let's go ahead and select that bowl again um, there we go and we're going to do a GZ move it down to about here and we're going to scale it into that line now let's let's scale but not on the Z so we're going to do a shift Z so let's scale it into those come close I don't really want them to touch because you need to get some weird um, glitching so this is our bowl shape with our flask on top um, I want this to be a metal bowl because metal is it holds cold better than wood we're also going to come in right now and we're going to do a shift or we're going to tab in so we're editing select a for all alt e extrude along normals we're going to go outward And we're going to go right about there. I want to select this top surface because it looked like it was kind of tapered. Go back in the front. Go scale Z0. And then I want to put a loop cut on the outside and on the inside. Um, we're going to go ahead and do a shift H. So it's the only thing we see. Tab back in. Loop select. Because we're going to do a subsurface on this one and a smooth shade as well. Um, always two. I like to go any higher and really it starts lagging your computer. And I have a beefy computer, so not a beefy video card yet. It's kind of hard to get those 3080s or 3090s, which I want to get before Cycles X comes out. Because uh, Cycles X apparently is going to be using the RTX on the NVIDIA card. It's supposed to reduce render times a lot. I'm going to go ahead and keep these triangles down here. Mm, no, I'm not. Yeah, I guess I will. We'll never ever see the bottom of this. So when we do our stuff, you're not going to see this. You might see it from the top, but it's still, it's just flat. So you're not going to, you're not going to have a problem with it. We're going to come here. We're going to do a smooth shade. I want to put a ring out here on the top edge of this bowl. So we're going to loop select that. That's one reason why I did the edge loop. We're going to do an Alt E, long normals, and we're going to come out. And I want to go down, GZ, like so. I'm also going to come in and do another loop select up here. 
and I want to come around this and I want to do a GZ here. It's kind of get a weird shape. It's going to be like rolled metal. So and you see how it flares out on the inside? I don't want that flare out. So I'm going to do a loop out here and bring that up underneath that ledge. There we go. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. I think I'm going to grab this inside edge and do a scale shift Z and scale that out a little bit. Yeah, there we go. That looks good. Now, again, other than the glass, I get most of my textures from Polygon. So to prepare for that, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do a loop select on the edge that's going to be hidden. And I'm going to mark that as a seam. And what that's going to do is that's going to make that seam. Um, so I got two big disc. So what I'm going to do, let's pull this guy over now because we're going to use this. I'm going to do an, an A. We're going to do a unwrap. So we've got two big discs. Now let's select our material. I have plenty of materials because I have a membership to Polygon. I know I sound like a Polygon commercial, but really the thing that sells me is this Polygon material converter because you can get materials from other places, but you still have to set up your nodes. Getting it from Polygon, I'm trying to look for a nice metal. Um, Let's go with this one. This one's a uh, corroded heavy. Um, I don't have to set that node up. So if I hit load and apply material, there's that. I'm going to scale this up so it's bigger. See, the nodes are already set up. And inside the nodes, they have, they have all this stuff. So yes, I am a big fan. And basically, right off the bat, to have out this looks... I mean, it just looks awesome it's got the bump in it it's got i mean this is perfect that's not so great right there and the reason for that is what why does it do that right there so i'm gonna pick face pick l on here to see which one it is and it, it shouldn't be doing that that's this outside, and for serious reason, I've got some stretching going on. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to unwrap that again. Do I still have that stretching? I do. And let me see how my surfaces look. They look fine. See, there's not a split there. There's there's no reason for that. So let's do a loop cut in here. Not that way. Here. We're going to move that up. And it took care of that little problem I had. I, I just don't understand what that problem was about. But I mean, look at the edge. You can see the bumpiness to it. I liked it. I like it a lot. I'm going to do Alt-H on hide everything. There's my glass bowl. I'm going to grab this bowl here. I'm going to scale it in so it looks like it's touching that glass bowl. Cradling it. Alright, so that sets up. That's going to set up my height for this one over here. And I'm going to use the same material over here. So we're going to go back to the white. And we'll, so we're done with this for now. So we'll chip D on this bowl. Move that bowl. We're going to drop it where it was. And we're going to do a, a control or an LG. Yeah, that almost went perfect. Actually, you just need to move it over a little bit. And that X to the 3. 3 is fine. All right. Now this bowl can be the same bowl as this bowl, so we don't, actually we need to make it a little shallower so the, the flame can touch it. So we're going to do a, a scale in the Z, only the Z, to about there, 
I'm gonna scale the whole thing up a little bit. Actually, we're gonna scale the thing up like this. Then we're gonna scale Z. Like. Like this. Now, being a, a design engineer, designing cars, I know if, if I have this bottle touching this bottle and this bottle cradling in this hole and you have this set up where this bottle sitting in here and the height is set up that's too many restrictions you have to have something that's not restricted so basically this bottle laying in here connected onto this the weight of this bottle is going to pull down and sit in the bottom of this bowl you do not need to cradle the edges its location is based on this bottle connected to this so don't over constrain your stuff that's going to make it more look less realistic so basically this this bowl positions this this is positioned in there if you really want it to look realistic we can make this whole thing be like offset to like this because it's all it's all going to be able to be slid around the desk we're going to go centered for now I'm going to do a shift a mesh torus we're going to make this about this five inches this is we're going to have about 0.375 let's go ahead and click off we need to go into wireframe looks like i'm like right in a good spot object smooth shade let's say shift h for some reason my screencast keys are not on anymore let's turn those back on okay so when I tab into this, I want to select this inside ring to be my scene. Now, since this is a ring and it's going to be metal, it's got to have a point on it that looks like it's been welded. So we're going to pick this point right here. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to bulge this out by doing Alt E. Long normals. So it's a ring sort of like this and then i'm going to do some loop cuts out here to bring it closer because we're going to add a subsurface modifier on here and if you look at it you kind of want it to look like it's been welded all the way around now to make it look a little more realistic we can make this not be so perfect i'm going to move it down a little bit here Move it in there a little bit there. All right. But what we need to do is we need to mark a seam right here and right here. Well, we only need to do one side really. Basically, this is gonna allow this to be laid flat. So let's mark that seam. I marked it sharp, but that's not what I wanted. Mark seam. You'll probably end up doing that a lot too because they're right next to each other and they both say mark for the beginning. All right. So this material I want, um, I like this discolored one. So we're going to apply that material and show you what that looks like. Looks like this. So if I tab into this, say all is a UV unwrap. This is what we get. I'm going to move that around so this little rust spot's not on the weld and. So let's tab in and say all. Oh, here it is over here. And let's do a little bit of a scale up. And that looks good to me. And if we wanted this to look a little different. Because it is a weld. We could come in here and select these surfaces. And they're down here and we just kind of move them. I mean, it doesn't really make much of a difference, but it won't continue a pattern onto it. If there's a, you know, like these lines and stuff. So that's our ring. Um, now we need to put some legs on this and a good way to do that. And we want that, those legs to come all the way down to this surface here. So let's go into control three view and I'm going to put it right on this right here. This surface. That's where we're going to weld it in at. 
Um, so grab these top two. Let's grab these two. I'm going to do a shift D. Duplicate it. Right mouse click to put it back down. Go back to the front view. We're going to do, do an extrude. Kind of get the thickness. I'm going to turn off the subsurface on this one for right now. And I'm also going to drop down into white so it looks a little bit better. I'm going to grab this top ones here. I'm going to go and we're going to use the control button. You know, matter of fact, we're going to turn this back on the subsurface. I'm going to hit control and I'm going to click, click. And then what this is doing is it's allowing me to extrude without hitting the E button every time. All right. So I'm going to loop cut this down so it looks a little more sharp. This is really wide. So I'm going to select it and do a scale in the Y direction. Bring that in to be a little more narrow. Uh, I'm going to turn this off real quick. I'm going to do a loop cut here and a loop cut here. I'm going to turn that back on. I want to grab all these surfaces on the bottom here. Go back to the front view. And then we're going to continue with our control right mouse click. I think I want to come in and then around. Now remember I got to come down to this line right here. So I'm going to go come ahead, go ahead and come down almost all the way. I know I didn't reach it, but what we'll do is we'll come into wireframe. We'll grab all this and then we'll move it until it's touching it. Do I want to come in? Do I want to come up? Let's go right here with it. I'll grab this loop selected to de dissolve it. Same with this one. I'll put a loop select in there. I'm going to rotate it for one because it's we need individual. And then I'm going to move it. Like there, and this one I'm going to rotate and move. Now I'm going to select all these by hitting L on there. And I want to do a F3. I don't know how this is going to work, so we're going to just try it. We're going to do smooth. If I could spell it correctly. There we go. Kind of made this little area thin, so let's undo that. Loops like this, let's scale this up, rotate it, then do an L on here. Try that again. Oh, they look good. Let's select these ones and move them down to that line. All right. Do a shift Z. Let's go back to material. Now we need to unwrap this. So let's come in. Let's select this edge here all the way around. Uh, do that one too. I'm going to do the other side as well. Mark seam. Now on this bottom area here, I need to do another loop cut. Then we're going to do an L on here. UV unwrap. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I think it looks good. Now, this is going to be welded on. And right now, to me, it looks like it's just sitting on there. So we're going to add, tab in. We're going to add another UV sphere. So shift A. Or not a UV sphere, but a torus. 
Um, we're going to drop that down to like 0.5. And that's fine there too. I don't know where it's at at the moment. So we're going to tab out and do a shift H tab back in. I figured it was in the center here at the cursor where it should have been. And we're going to move this in the X direction over this way. And to get the right size, I'm going to scale it. So it sticks out on both these sides. And then in the front view, I'm going to rotate it and then move it down and rotate it. And scale it. So it looks like they welded it in there. Um, of course, that doesn't look like they welded it in there. Not yet. So we're going to do proportional editing. I'm going to grab this line and go G. Um, I want to make sure in proportional editing that I only get connected. So when I say G, it only moves that. And then I got to zoom in so I don't get all of it. Because welds are never perfect. We could just come around and just kind of move this around. I don't know if you guys ever really paid attention to welds. Basically a guy takes a straight piece of metal and just starts heating it up until it goes all the way around. So there can be ripples in it. They don't have to be perfectly smooth. They are usually shiny. Um, unless painted or ground, you can grind them down. Let's get a little more right here. Yeah. That would look like, like a weld. Now I need to unwrap that so it looks a little better. I'm just gonna say L, UV, unwrap. <clears throat> I see a lot of polygons on there and I don't know why. I mean, it's got a s smooth shader on it. Oh, we didn't have the smooth shade turned on yet. Okay, there we go. So there's my weld along with my leg. So I'm going to tab back in. I'm going to select both of those. Let's go to the top view. I know my circle's not in the middle of the, the world, but that's fine. We're going to shift D. Drop it back down, R, Z, 90. And you see it, it goes on individual, because that's what we picked. We're going to go with 3D cursor, R, Z, 90. And then shift D, drop back down, R, Z, 90. And one more time. And then we're going to tab out. And this is our stand. Um, we can always change the texture if we don't like it. But for right now, this is what I'm going to render it at. Uh, in this in this episode, I'm not going to put the liquid or condensation or anything inside these because we'll probably have multiple of these. And um, I don't want to spend the time having some with condensation and then it's not doing anything. So we're just going to leave it like this for now. If you guys have anything you... Uh, want to ask go ahead and put it in the comments don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you're not subscribed uh you can be notified when this comes up it's every thursday at 5 p.m so if you don't want to be notified just go in to the bell and uncheck notification that way if you don't want to see the video game posts that i do um just remember wizard study every thursday 5 p.m right now i'm not doing any premieres because they I don't have enough people watching this series as of today's date, which is 5-9-2021. And this is week 10 of a 52-week course, so we are one-fifth of the way through. 
Um, it might go longer depending on how full the room is. I might add some more videos, maybe release two every Thursday. It all depends on our timing. But every Thursday, 5 p.m., there will be a video for the next 43 weeks. So once you're watching this, it's 42, 42 more weeks. But as always, until next time, stay creative. <laughs>